these are bits that I've tried. Uh, I make my own bits, freezing bits, freezer bits. Um, these are bits that I've tried on my last outing in a two night session, I had 10 runs. Yes. Five carp, um, two lost carp, and three bream, uh, which wasn't bad for this lake for an end of summer session. Um, all I'm doing is going to tell you that they're called Orn Bees, you can guess <laughs> as to what the flavourings are, but uh, they've worked for me straight off, um, so I'm going to try them tonight. I have a mixture of 20 mils and 15 mils, hopefully we'll get a few fish. thing with carp fishing is making sure that their lines are actually sunk to the bottom. You can do that two ways, you can either use back leads or uh, use a fluorocarbon and have it very very um, very slack. Um, I prefer having both methods so that I have slack lines and the, the back leads, I usually use flying back leads on the, the rods. Um, and I've also used ordinary back leads. And they just attach after casting out. As I say, this is the it's only the second time I've used these here, so I like, I like the look of them the first time I've used them, so hopefully they give good indication tonight. The main thing you're f worried about is fish safety, that if that line was to snap up here, all this can easily come off. But the main thing is that it's not dragging a lead. A lead can actually be sh taken off it very, very quick with a shake of its head. Sometimes you'll lose it on the take. Sometimes you'll lose the, the lead on casting. But it's better to lose a lead than a fish. 8 mil uh, fixed swivel in the, in the uh, quick link. Attach the eight mouth swivel and it's fixed in in place there's a wee pin going through that um, the lead clip holding it in position making it actually a static uh, setup where you want them to drop the lead. A wee bit of tungsten putty about an inch from the hook keeps the bait low as well on the ground whenever whenever we're what do you call it whenever we're fishing. Um, that can be moved up, set wherever you want. The rigs I'm using are um, size eight uh camisa or corda curve uh, captor curve hook barbed but in saying barbed they're micro barbed there's a very very small barb on them. Um, with the small barb it just gives you that wee bit of hold on the penetration in case it does take you into the weed. Um, but they will be able to throw the barb uh, very easy. Um, they're a preferred hook pattern of mine now. Um, a very good hook pattern.
that's that's the rig. Whenever you're fishing most places, uh, it's a good idea to arrive early um, and get your whereabouts, uh, any snags, uh, reed lanes, um, any any lily pad patches, so that you know where they are at night, uh, especially whenever you're fishing for carp at night. Um, you don't want them to hinder you. At night, so if you can visualise where they have been in the daytime, it will help during the night that you know they're there to keep the fish away from them spots as you're playing the fish. Um, it's one good pointer. It's on the left side towards the reeds, so I will be. I'll be. Whenever I'm putting out the baits again, with the help of the light of the car, because I found that the the lights on the back of the boat at night are very blind and you can hardly see where you're <laughs> going <laughs> so um, with the help of with the help of the car um, I'll hopefully be putting it close to the same spot again um, and hopefully attracting more fish each time to the one spot rather than spreading the bait all around if the carp come in and they feel uh, a tight line what the, what they tend to do is they rub on that tight line and the spook they, they just go away from the, the, the baited area might not return for a couple of hours, might not return for a couple of days we don't know because we haven't seen that underwater um, I'm sure the Corda underwater uh, team they've, they've proved what happens with tight lines so um, I've always fished with back leads these wee flying back leads which actually come uh, whenever, whenever you're casting, if you're casting, they'll come back maybe 20, 30 yards. That's pinned to the ground straight away. Um, on this one here, I've uh, a piece of tungsten rig tubing, which again will, it's very heavy. Will sit nice and neat, tidy on the bit lake bed. Um, the main thing is keeping everything pinned to the ground. So it is. Um, tight lines on, on rods will get you the odd fish, but will spook a lot of fish. A lot of people tend to get liners, which is known as liners, where, where they're maybe the fish are hitting it and they're getting a beep or two. Um, and it's fish running, what it is, is fish running into them lanes and they're spooking. Um, it's better to be getting the liners off fish maybe attacking the bait rather than off fish actually hitting the line. It's a lot more accurate with the boat plus you can put uh, big amounts of bait as well. Uh, this is the feed that I'm going to be using. Um, I've prepped it over the last two days and um, only added the boilies and the few halibut pellets this evening. Um, what it is is actually it's a cheaper version. Um, I just came across it there during the week where I would normally buy the, the dynamite, big tubs of dynamite baits, uh, particle, particles um, from B&M. I've actually got a bag of bird seed, soaked it overnight, boiled it and soaked it overnight and it's turned out brilliant. Uh, I've also added a few additives in the, in the boiling process. So, and then a mixture of chopped boilies uh, to keep the fish guessing. Because I think the more different colours, flavours, confuses the carp to not knowing uh, which bait's safe or not. Yeah, good help on that. There a bit on top.
night time we'll be looking for a wee piece of green elastic coming out till the end of the tip. Um, once it does come to the tip, I've marked markers on the far bank so I know whenever it becomes night. I always document every fish that I catch um, and put it along with the photograph on my database on, on the computer so that I can check to see where I've caught the fish before uh, has it put on any weight um, it actually was in a market condition and not that common very very good condition um, so uh, it's just to keep an eye on all the fish that I am catching um, a lot of people don't do it, I do, because I like to see what way the fish are coming on. 7 pound 4 ounce, 14 ounce on bread, 8 pound on bread and a 9 pound 4 ounce on rolled zingers and it documents every fish that I have caught. I do a photograph both left and right side of the fish because on, say, the bears, the likes of these scale patterns, very, very easy to detect in each individual fish. It's like a thumbprint. Commons are much harder because they've all the scale. All the scales are all virtually the same. Some of these wee ones down around the, the anal fins and the pectorals and that there are, sometimes you can actually pick them out. 
Uh, sometimes the likes of these we mismatch scales, you can pick them out. Even the likes of a real dark red fin, anal fin, might be a telltale sign. This is a good wee photograph. So it is uh, proof that the fish are breeding in this lake. There was about a dozen caught on maggots that, that uh, day. Not by myself, by another angler who was actually specific, specifically fishing for roach and small fish. And he couldn't believe that he was actually catching small carp. So they are breeding in here, which is a good sign. This wee linear. Uh, one of my mates actually, his niece actually caught it uh, pre spawning. And it was, it was about 11 pound. It's now 9 pound too. It had actually, it had lost weight after spawning, probably gone down to about 7 pound, and now it's back up to 9 too. I think, he, I think she caught it actually at around about 11 pound. And uh, we have checked for the scale patterns. Here's a photograph and he has checked to see. So it's also helpful if other anglers do keep both sides. The likes of the scale patterns are very easily detectable. So there, even that wee single scale there on its own, in between the, the row on the back and the, the linear, can be a significant uh, telltale as to it being the same fish. My biggest on this lake um, came October two years ago and it was £16.2 two ounces. Um, around about September, October, over the last, not counting last year, over the last five years, I've constantly crept up and got my PB on this lake. Um, the f bigger fish tend to come out in them months, whether it's because they're putting on a bit of weight for the winter, uh, before they go into a slumber and just lie there. Um, I don't know. I, but I've always I've always done well in the winter months on this lake um, until last year, where last year um, I had seven blanks in a row for weekends, and I've never done that on this lake. I've always caught on this lake. I've maybe maybe the odd blank, but everybody does. Um, this year I've developed. Uh, my own baits and up till now I have made seven flavours and I've caught on five of them and I've caught heavily on five of them uh, so there are two that I haven't tried yet but I'll try them maybe over the winter whenever the fish start to be getting a wee bit wary of the baits that I'm using um, I've had 14 in one day out of this lake, uh, mainly on bread. I love fishing on the bread uh, in the lily pads. It's an exciting way of catching the carp. Um, on the pole, I've had six in one day on the pole, which was a fantastic day, and lost a few as well. Um, on the bait runners, uh, I've had nine on the bait runners, is the best day session I've had, day to night session. Um, on the bait runners, um, but 14 in the one day, 12 of them came on the bread on the surface, and two were on the bottom bits. Um, it was a fantastic day. Uh, I think 11 of them were doubles, so can't beat that. Two of them were actually 15 pound plus, so brilliant day very important to catch and release. Uh, uh, in carp especially because they're, they're slow enough growing. Um, great fighting fish. Uh, there's not enough of them.
Through the lead, no lead left. Mm. Martin, you wouldn't do us a favour. Just go down and soak that, will you? Just careful. Zero. <laughs> What's my favourite method? Um, has to be bread, surface bread. Has to be. I've caught, I've caught hundreds. Although a lot of them have been the same fish, um, I've caught a few hundred out of here on bread. It's frustrating catching them on the bread <laughs> because. Uh, you're, they can actually come up and suck the bread, the the other bits, and as soon as they see your piece with the hook in it, this this shy off it. You maybe see the bit of line, the shy off it. Um, so it can be frustrating, but uh, I think there's plenty of frustrated anglers out there. So I'm not on my own. <laughs> Whenever I started fishing for the carp here. There was a lot more carp here in this lake. They weren't as big, uh, but they were plentiful. Uh, the, the, the average size was around about maybe much similar to what it is now at the minute, seven to 12 pound. Uh, but there was plenty of them. You, you maybe had six or seven anglers fishing the lake and everybody would have got maybe three, four, five runs a night. It, it wasn't it wasn't uncommon for everybody to get a couple of fish. Then uh, it started getting very very hard. That we noticed uh, fish becoming accustomed to baits and rigs, and maybe once one person was catching on a bait, everybody was using that bait for that year or that nine months or so, and. Um, it got to the stage where all the fish became accustomed, accustomed to that bait and eventually they became wise. Carp are very, very, very wise and when they do wise to the bait you need to change your bait or change your setup or do something because 
I learned that I actually learned that from uh, one year where we caught for maybe eight months of the year we were catching on pineapple bites here constant and I thought uh, the next year I'll start using pineapple bites at the start uh, that year I never fished through the winter which was a big mistake um, I started roughly around about February March and started with my first uh, five or six night sessions on here using pineapple boilies thinking ah oh, they loved them last year they'll like them this year seven oh, five or six blanks later I knew to change to a different bait the first night I changed to a different bait I started catching fish again uh, it's just one of those things about this lake and probably a lot of the lakes the carp lakes around that once the fish become accustomed to a certain flavour make size type of boilie they will go off that boilie once they've been hooked once or twice um, and it's up to the angler themselves to change to catch fish because the fish aren't going to just keep accepting what you're throwing out there you need to change to the, f the carp become wary you need to be one step ahead of them that's a good idea the way the lid went there. Yeah. Which was Just keeps it on. See the way the fish played mostly on the top? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Then you back there. That should be okay anyway. It's the way I prefer to lose the lid. That's why, from about halfway in, he stayed on the top of the surface and didn't kite either left or right. He came towards me. So, uh, for the sake of a lead, it can help. This lake used to be you used to catch carp 24/7. You could have caught carp because they've become wary now. A lot of the fish have been caught during the night. You still will catch a few 
on the bottom baits during the day, but not as many as you used to. During the day, uh, if you do a bit of stalking, you, you, you can catch fish. Um, you'll get the odd run on the bait runners during the day, but not as many as you used to get years ago. Um, it's more of a night lake. Carp love halibut pellets. Um, the only the only thing is, um, I would advise people if they're going to use halibut pellets, only use them during the summer, summer months, because the fish find it hard to digest, or uh, to digest the oils that are in halibut uh, pellets uh, during the winter. They find it very hard to digest them, so. Um, if you're going to use them during the winter, be sparing about them, just a few. Um, as I say, I have, I have a few in my uh, mix for the carp the night, um, but they are, there is only a few. Normally, normally I could go through a bag or two here in a session on the pole. Um, I have maybe about a couple hundred grams, about 200 grams in that full bait box. Which is nothing. Um, any high oil contents uh, pellets, it uh, I think it attacks the liver of the of the carp, and because it's hard, because it's uh, cold, and the fish aren't active, they can't burn off the fat that builds around the liver, and it can actually kill the fish. Lost the weight again, no weight, so that also helps with the hooking. Hook in the bottom lip again. Put that over the bonnet, Martin, is it? Or over the eye of the boot. Let's 
going to get the power from there. Ten pound yet? Ten pound ten maybe? We'll go for ten nine in the center. I started then moving to here, this lake, from the other small lake that was potentially just a tench lake. When I moved to here, uh, eventually catching a tench of six and a half pound here, um, and noticed a guy from the north of Ireland, uh, Marty Harrison, a very, very accomplished carp angler. Um, Got friendly with him, him and his mate, and started to learn a wee bit more about carp, and got interested in it. Uh, so I, I decided to uh, maybe start off the carp. So learnt learnt a few things from Marty, tactics, rigs, fish safety was the main thing. Uh, Having a, a good on hooking mat, having a good uh, net for catching, releasing the fish. Um, fish safety, especially for carp, is paramount. Uh, because they live, they live for what 50, 60 years, and if we on this lake that I'm fishing at the minute, um, I fished this lake for about 17 years and I know I've caught from my database at home on the computer, I know I've caught fish um, 10 years ago, 15 years ago and I know I've caught them only recently again. Uh, I've watched uh, some of the fish grow, I've watched some of the fish after spawning lose maybe a third of their body weight. Um, I've seen fish die on here, which was very saddening. Uh, I've heard of people uh, removing fish from here, um, which annoys me as well, because they obviously don't understand. Uh, they don't understand that moving fish to another lake can introduce. Um, diseases from that fish that they're actually introducing into the lakes. Um, 
this lake used to actually hold a good stock of carp but uh, it now holds probably between 100 and 120 fish uh, possibly most of them I've caught there's still a few of the big ones that I haven't uh, there's a big 18-2 Mura and a 17-4 Common uh, that I've seen photographs of and I, I would imagine that they are properly weighed because the, the young guy that caught them is an accomplished carp angler as well um, so, and I know he has proper gear for weighing and all At night time you can imagine that uh, the fish they're using their barbels constantly to suss out all different types of smells tastes um, that's why I offer maybe a couple of different versions I used to offer a couple of different versions of pellets uh, now I've introduced a couple of different versions of my own boilies just to keep them guessing so that uh, they don't become accustomed to, accustomed to one boily because if they come accustomed to one boily you might end up overfeeding them in that boilie and then that boilie's never going to be any good again to you Again I lost the lead I'm not worried I prefer to see them losing the lead because it, at least I know it, it's telling me that my rigs are actually working well so that if I ever did have a snap off and a fish, there, there was a rig, if there was a rig. You in, Martin? Alright. Um, if, there, if there was a rig out there that I had snapped off and it, it has been left from, say, there to there, at least I know that whenever a fish catches, takes that bait, it's going to straight away try and shake that lead and it will lose the lead um, some of the rigs I've seen on this lake uh, defy belief so that I Just make sure that that's whenever it's lying on the ground, it's lying static on the ground for me. I don't want I don't want line sitting up, sort of like that. So the last inch or so is going to be sitting on the ground. It's going to be sitting like that.
Um, with me making my own baits now, I think I'm got to the stage now that I'm hopefully two or three steps ahead of them. <laughs> so, for bigger fish coming into the winter, uh, maybe about a month before spawning um, is good as well. I personally like the summertime whenever I can go stock on the fish in the lily pads in between the reeds. Whereas a lot of the a lot of the bivy anglers, what we call the bivy anglers over here, boys that sit in their bivvies behind two rods or or whatever and they don't go exploring the margins. And the fish are there. And the fish are readily will readily take the baits if you throw it right in front of them. Um, I've learned a, I've learned a lot from watching the likes of John Wilson uh, doing his stocking, and uh, I I recently met him in uh, one of the Dublin shows and got talking to him and uh, told him that he was a big influence on on my stocking uh, for carp and uh, he was a great man to meet so he was a very very nice man indeed. The thing I've learned over the years about carp fishing is fish welfare. Uh, looking after the fish is the main thing. I've had my son and I've my daughter fish here and they've caught carp. And uh, hopefully other anglers that come here will do likewise where they'll catch carp. And years down the line they'll eventually bring their children or their grandchildren. And they too will enjoy the sport that I've had over the 17 years that I've fished this lake. As I said, uh, I've gone through the run of the mill from trout to match fishing to bream and, and roach fishing uh, on the feeder, on the pole. Then developed a liking for tench, fish tench, fish for tench for maybe about four years, three to four years. Loved the fishing for the tench. Um, and brought the tench fishing to this carp lake and, and, and enjoyed catching the tench on the pole and the waggler here. And then just got a liking for the carp and got the hook, got the bug. And I've just, uh, my, car, my carp uh, gear has just grown and grown and grown. <laughs> so it has. Um, just love coming here, getting out of the house. Freedom.
along with somebody else's lane. <laughs> you, should say, you should say this to camera. You say what you said first of all. You say what you said first of all about them feeding everywhere. They're feeding everywhere. They're feeding everywhere on my boilies. <laughs> Let's hope they're catching off you. Okay, get this rod back out. <laughs> 